struggling with messy media files and missing footage. In this video, I'm going to show you my ultimate system for organizing your content for multiple shoots so that you can never see the dreaded media offline message again. You'll learn how to structure and label your media folders like a pro. Quickly build stack timelines for A-roll and B-roll. Create a color-coded selects timeline for faster editing. Use subtitles and markers to highlight key points in all your A-roll. And finally, my go-to export settings for the best YouTube quality. Let's grab a free DaVinci Resolve project file from DaVinciResolveTitles.com. It saves about 10 minutes per project. It's packed with timeline templates, preset audio, video tracks, correctly leveled sound for music and special effects. Time codes and links are in the description. Let's dive in and streamline your editing workflow. Here's a typical folder structure. So I've got videos where I've shot at their headquarters and then I've got all my exports. And then each person I go and shoot at a different location has their own folder. And here's one where I did a three day shoot. And then I've got the categories broken down into day one. And inside day one, we've got a drone folder and I've labeled all the files on day one, D1, and then the name of the camera. So in this case, DJI, and they're all numbered. So it's really easy to find. And the same with the GoPro, D1, GP for GoPro for short. And then I've got all my iPhone clips, again, D1, IP for iPhone. And each folder's got its own structure like that. On day three, the only difference here was I shot on a Nikon Z8 and also we filmed an interview. And in here I'd have like a text file with the names and the info of the customer. Once my media files are in that folder, they never get moved. This completely avoids the dreaded media offline message. I'm using a SanDisk Extreme Pro 4 terabyte drive with backups going to the cloud using Backblaze. When you import footage into Resolve, avoid moving the files to other folders. When I import the files, I want to make sure that I'm on the edit page. And then we want to make sure we can see the master. And next I'm going to go to my finder window, grab the whole folder, drag it in like this. And this will keep my exact folder structure the same as it is on the finder window, which is a lot easier to use. With my footage now imported, the next thing I tend to do is go to timelines and then I've got a folder in here called templates. So I've got a load of templates that are ready to go and I'm going to go for 4K30. So what I'm going to do is just go and duplicate this template a few times. And then I'm going to move them up a level into my timelines folder and give them a name. So generally I'll start with the selects as the first one and just choose my clips to go in that and then I'll actually have the final timeline. And if you've got any other timelines open, just close those to get them out of the way. Next thing I'm going to do is on here, I'm going to click on this little arrow and then I'm going to go to the selects timeline. I'm also going to click on here. So we've got stack timelines. So this is my selects and down here is going to be my main edit. As this is an interview and a review, what I would do is I'd start with my piece to camera. So I just go select all the clips of the piece to camera with the person talking, drag them onto the timeline. The interviews are all trimmed down to make life a bit easier for yourself. What I always like to do is color code my clips, select the clips in the range. These are all the drone ones. Go down to clip color and then for the drones, go for navy because, well, the sky's kind of blue. So I go into each one. For all the GoPro shots, these are all time lapses. I'm going to make these purple. If you want to delete audio because you know there's no sound, all you need to do is hold down Alt or Option. Select that layer, just the sound and delete that. And then you've only got the video clip if you don't need the audio. To make life a bit easier for yourself on the selects wheel, if you right click, we're going to delete empty tracks. That just makes it a little bit easier to view your selects reel. What I've done is I've put each day on the timeline in the blue here. This is all the drone shots in the teal. These are the iPhone shots. And then in the purple, I've got the GoPro shots, which are the time lapses. And I've tried to keep that consistent each day. So we've got drone, iPhone, GoPro. And then the third day was a little bit different. It was only on the drone and the Nikon Z8. I just find being consistent with your colors and the order that you do things in really speeds things up. So if the client wants to see anything that's shot on day one, it's all in this group. Anything shot on day two is in this group. Anything shot in day three is in this group. And they're in the same order every time. DaVinci Resolve Studio has a built-in subtitle generator, which I find really speeds up my workflow. Unfortunately, it's not available in the free version. You can make life a lot easier for yourself by selecting the main edit timeline, ensure that's red, and then go up to timeline, then create subtitles from audio. The default settings are fine, press create, and give it a couple of seconds while it works out your subtitles. I find this is really useful because you can read the title. So if you're skimming through the timeline really quickly, 
You can find key points and then you can decide which B-roll you want to use from your selects reel. And you can also add markers. If you double press M, it opens your marker and you can say what it is. So if you need a specific shot, that's where I put decking arriving. And over on the left hand side, you've got this wonderful thing called the index. What this allows you to do is go to markers and then I would adjust the size of the name. And then that way you can see, OK, there's decking arrive. And when I click on this, if I click anywhere on the timeline, when I click on this marker, it'll take me to the exact position every single time. And I go through the clip, add all my markers with key points. So I know what footage I need to put on there. I've gone through the entire timeline, added in all my markers. So if I need to jump to something, I can do that really quickly just by clicking on it. And it moves play ahead to that exact point. So it makes it easier to find the B-roll that you want and drag it and drop it onto the timeline. If you want to make your timeline a little bit neater, we can grab the bottom of this, bring our subtitles up, make that nice and small. And if you want a bit more space on your main timeline, just move it to around about the center and then you can lift it up and this will give you more space to work. So you can get to more video tracks and more audio tracks and you can use your mouse wheel to scroll up and down. And when we drag a click from our stack timeline to our main timeline, by default, it just puts it on the layer above. It's going to be its sound for a moment. And then we can see it plays, a piece of camera's talking, then it cuts to the B roll. And that's how I structure my edit, just drag them from this timeline onto my normal timeline and keep going until you're finished. Then for the export settings, I go to deliver. And the best result for YouTube is to go to the YouTube preset, go to 2160 because it was shot in 4K, go for MP4. I would only change this to H265 and then I choose normalize audio for YouTube. And then I fill in my details and also make sure that you check the chapters and markers if you want to have key points in your video and you can fill in the details like title description and you can choose to upload a thumbnail if that's already created. So for me, these settings work really good and I use them on all my videos. If you found this video helpful, leave a comment below, hit that like button and smash that subscribe. And well, if you didn't like it, hit that dislike twice and thanks for watching.